Hello, everyone. Um, welcome to our guide to voting during a pandemic in uh, North Carolina. My name is uh, Koko Nayo. I work with Church World Service as a refugee community organizer. My presentation today is uh, uh, to uh, provide people with the, a guide to uh, help you with the, your decision in uh, voting in uh, the election in 2020 in North Carolina. So here's our agenda today. Uh, we're gonna, I'm gonna be talking about the history of voting in the US, uh, the importance of uh, voting in our community, uh, how to register to vote and uh, how to vote safely uh, during the, uh, the COVID-19 and also understand who and uh, what we're voting for. So uh, before we go, I just wanna make sure that we all understand that this presentation is not a legal advice. Uh, it's meant to educate you about your rights and responsibilities. It's also uh, meant to provide you uh, with information and prepare people for the voting process. Uh, a little bit about the history uh, of voting in the U.S. Um, way, way, way back, uh, the right to vote that we enjoy today uh, was not won freely. Uh, people fought uh, to gain that right for self-determination. De um, then uh, there were times where only a white male uh, who owned property could vote. But it was not until decades of protest, protest that pe black people, women, and other citizens could vote at age 18. So uh, it's a privilege to have that opportunity to vote today. Um, the US citizenship provides us with uh, many benefits. Um, like up to obtain uh, a U.S. passport to expedite the process to bring some of uh, our family members to the U.S. Uh, to uh, get scholarships and uh, grants and to, able, to be able to vote and also provide us with uh, many government benefits. Uh, some federal jobs, uh, you can only apply to those jobs if you are a U.S. citizen. And the best one is also uh, give us the opportunity to be able to vote. So I'm going to be talking about why it is important to vote in the U.S. Uh, voting in uh, uh, the U.S. impacts every one of the benefits of uh, citizenship in our lives. Uh, voting is private, you cannot tell anyone who you vote for. You're the only one that knows it, and uh, that is also a privilege. It, voting in the US, it's safe. Uh, it's also allowed us to disagree and uh, also agree when you vote for someone, for instance, that means we agree with their policies. And if we don't vote for someone, we don't agree with their policies, or uh, we, yeah. So as a new uh, naturalized citizen, I uh, just want to make sure that people know how much power we have. Uh, since 2014, uh, more than 5 million people have become U.S. citizens. And in North Carolina especially, uh, more than 300,000 people, uh, 300,000 immigrants became a U.S. citizen as of 2018. So just to let, just to give you a perspective on uh, uh, how much power all these 300 people could uh, wield uh, when it comes to voting and changing the landscape of uh, uh, our political uh, life. Uh, so we have uh, the voting power to elect uh, someone that care, cares about our issues. Um, and uh, uh, for some people, uh, we hear people say that their vote do not count. 
But let me tell you, in the U.S., your vote count because your vote makes a difference. And uh, uh, the truth is, elections have been uh, decided by one vote per precinct, and uh, a single vote can change the outcome of an election. So imagine all these 300,000 uh, immigrants that live in, the, in the North Carolina and that, that are able to vote, all going out and vote, that can change the outcome of the election. So who can register to vote in North Carolina? Very important. And uh, one of the main thing is that you have to be a U.S. citizen and uh, have to take the oath of uh, citizenship. That's very important. And have to be at least 18 years old or, being, or turning 18 on election day. And also in North Carolina, uh, in addition to be a U.S. citizen, uh, being 18 years old, you have to reside or live in uh, one of the 100 counties uh, in North Carolina and uh, register at least 30 days immediately before the election. But you are not eligible to vote in North Carolina if you are already registered to vote in another state. You are not eligible to vote in North Carolina if you are incarcerated for a felony or felony conviction or your own parole, probation or post-release uh, supervision. Now, how and where to, uh, you can register to vote? Very simple. Uh, things have really, really evolved in North Carolina. And uh, as of now, you can register to vote online. If you are a TMV customer, and uh, has a North Carolina driver's license or a DMV issue state ID. You can click on this link here and that will get you on to the uh, DMV link and uh, help you uh, register to vote. You can also uh, do go the old fashioned way, which is get a paper copy of your, from your county board and uh, fill that out for first time, uh, registration, you must mail or deliver the application in person uh, with your original signature. If you need help with that, I will share a list of contacts with you at the end of this presentation. Uh, you reach out to us and we will help you do that. Uh, so you also have to update your voter registration if you move since last election for those who have already registered and voted before. If you change your name, you change your address, you change your party affiliation, you need to update your voter registration and you can do that online through the DMV site. Uh, to register to vote in North Carolina, here is what you need. You need a valid uh, North Carolina driver's license number or you need a uh, North Carolina photo ID card, the last four digit of your last of your social security number, a copy of uh, a current uh, utility bill, bank statement, paycheck, showing current addresses, right? Uh, and also you can use a government document showing your name and your current address issued within three months. And uh, now here is uh, the deadline to register to vote in the November 3rd general election in North Carolina. It is October 9th, 25 days before the election. And your application must be received by the county board of the election by this date, which is October 9th. So now let's get ready to vote first. Here, uh, there are four things that I uh, want you to know. One, we must make sure that we are registered to vote. And for that, uh, like in the previous slide, you have to be, make sure that you are a US citizen. And then you can check your registration status online. Uh, you can also call your county or state board of election if you're registration card did not show up in your mail. 
The second thing to do, you have to know the, uh, who the candidates are. It's very important, you know, the, who the candidates are. Read a little, bit about, a little bit about their policies. The third one is to know your polling place. And uh, uh, you can see that on your reg voter registration card, or you can also look that up online and the link is added to uh, this uh, slide. And uh, the fourth thing that we are, I would like people to know is that uh, voters in uh, North Carolina currently are not required to show a voter ID to vote. So three ways you may cast your votes, very important. And uh, uh, the first one is to vote early. Early voting, very uh, important. Uh, Registered voters can uh, go to the county board of election or go to a uh, alternate location to vote before election uh, November 3rd. This, uh, when you do this, you have less, less time to, st you spend less time in line to vote. And uh, uh, you can also, uh, you may register and vote at the one-stop site or early voting site during the early voting period. And that period is uh, from Thursday, October 15th through Saturday, October 31st. The second uh, way to vote is vote by mail. And uh, uh, in order to vote by mail, a voter cannot, if you cannot vote in person, you, you can request a ballot and fill that out, send it via mail to your board of election. You don't have to uh, present any reason for requesting a ballot. And uh, any, anyone who is registered to vote can request one. Uh, this uh, vote by mail is safe, secure, and easy way to vote, especially during the COVID-19 uh, for people who uh, don't feel safe uh, staying in line and uh, uh, want to make sure that they uh, respect the uh, social distancing. <clears throat> so your uh, absentee votes may be mailed or hand delivered to uh, the county board of election, right? Uh, <coughs> sorry. Sign and complete a uh, state absentee ballot request form must be received by the County Board of Election Office no later than 5 p.m. Tuesday, October 27th. Your complete absentee ballot must be received by Tuesday, November 3rd on election day and hope that the uh, post office delivered it by Friday, November 6th. The third one is to vote in person. That is election day. And it is Tuesday, November 3rd. You must cast your vote at your designated polling place, which means that you have to know where your polling place is. And that should be listed on your photo card. And uh, the polls are open at 6 a.m. and close, will be closed on set at 7 p.m. 30 p.m. on election day. Remember, no need to show an ID to vote on election day. So to uh, just a quick summary of what I just said. First, register to vote. Second, confirm that you are registered to vote. And uh, third, you can vote early. You can vote by mail or you can vote uh, in person. And uh, so that now that we know all we can do for ourselves, what can we do to help our community to vote? One, we can uh, participate in the phone banking, which means that uh, we make phone calls to targeted first-time voters to encourage them and reminding them to get out and vote. For those who are savvy at texting, we can use, you can use your skills to recruit people and uh, send people uh, information such as how to vote by mail or the polling location. 
Uh, we can also use our social media to encourage people to get out the vote. <clears throat> and also uh, voting early, we can uh, drive people to the, uh, the polling places. Uh, we can also assist uh, with the vote by mail, answering questions via phone and help with stamp when needed. Uh, there are many people who are going to vote early, uh, for the first time this year. And here is an example of uh, Fabiola Landeros. And uh, she is, she just turned a US citizen last year, it's voting uh, for the first time and uh, uh, voting for policies that protect her kids. Um, and also uh, she's looking forward uh, for a leader that will take her and her community further than right now. So we all have a reason why we're voting and it's very important that we do. So who do we vote for? Uh, I could not tell you who to vote for or which candidate to endorse because we work for a 501c3 organization and uh, we don't do that. However, we can tell you about the policies of uh, uh, each candidate or the policies uh, the candidates are putting forward. And uh, we will encourage you to also look them up and uh, ask them questions, join their town halls, and uh, um, that will also help you make your decision. So I uh, also before, uh, I also wanted to talk about the, uh, the US government, because when we go out and vote, we are voting for, uh, everything in the system that affects us, right? So we have to know uh, what the branches, let's talk a little bit about the branches of uh, the US government. Uh, we have the legislative, the executive, the uh, judicial. Some make the law, some carry out the law and other interpret the law and all this affects us. So at the federal level, we have the president, um, and also uh, that signed bills, uh, veto bills, can send the military anywhere in the world, make trade deals and choose leaders for important national offices. The vice president, uh, on the other hand, uh, can uh, take over if the president can do the job and also can help in uh, a, when there's a tie in the Senate vote. And senators and uh, representative, uh, it uh, represents citizens in their home uh, state and district, introduce laws and vote on laws. And uh, we have the, uh, the Supreme Court uh, with the justices and federal court that are nominated by the president and approved by the US Senate. So your vote for the president and your senator affects who is appointed to the Supreme Court and the federal court. So make sure all, they, uh, the Supreme Court makes sure all laws are constitutional. Uh, now, uh, let's talk about the, uh, the state level. For instance, North Carolina, you have the governor and uh, one of the job of the governor is to appoint state officials to manage budget, to veto the state laws. And, uh, and uh, at the state level, we have state senators and state representative and they represent uh, citizens from uh, they are part of the state. They sit on uh, policy committees, introduce new laws, and vote on laws. So the state district attorney choose who to prosecute and decide charges of a plea agreement, investigate crimes in the state, and conduct trials and appeal. Uh, state, the uh, commissioner, the county commissioner, commissioners approve budgets and hire employees. At the city level, uh, we have the mayor that oversees policy, uh, the police and the fire department, oversees education, housing, transportation that affects you directly in the city. Uh, but the mayor is also help in uh, their job by city council members uh, who make policies for cities, set the city budget, uh, set the city goals, oversee major 
project. So local and city level elections are very, very important, but because they really directly. So thank you. Uh, here are the contacts that I, I said that I will uh, share with you. Uh, you can reach out to us and uh, we will uh, help you uh, provide you the, the guides and uh, uh, so because voting is a privilege please use it not only voting for you you also vote in your community and uh, future generation thank you so much